And welcome to Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Today is March 26th, 2019. Um, a nice question that came um, uh, by one of our participants. Uh, one, what is consciousness and how do we rise it? So uh, it's the loaded question, and I'm going to try to answer it to the best of my ability. Um, basically, um, consciousness is all there is. Every, everything is consciousness. Everything is a part of the totality, anything in totality, anything that, um, whether it's an underlying uh, of things or things that you can um, come in contact whether you're it's a part of your imagination it's your thoughts your feelings it's your body objects that you can see and encounter um, anything that exists is consciousness consciousness is all there is there is nothing outside of consciousness everything is consciousness you can imagine if you need a visual imagination of consciousness and this is how you can look at it that um let's imagine the ocean that there's only the ocean and no, there is, there is no beaches, there's no land, uh, no mountains, no trees or vegetations, nothing that you can compare or as a contrast to the water. The water, the ocean is all there is. That's the only thing exists. Okay. So we'll just imagine that for a moment then you can compare that to have a visual regarding consciousness. Consciousness is all there is. Everything that you see, you touch, you smell, you feel, you can imagine is a part of consciousness. It is consciousness. So the second part of this question um, the question was, what is con consciousness and um, how do we rise it? How do we lift it up? So we are part of the consciousness since it's in everything and everywhere. So then consciousness, it's got the ability of taking different forms and shapes and looks and different acts and behaviors. It can be anything it wants to be, anything that you can imagine or has ever existed or will exist is consciousness. It can come as human beings, as animals, as vegetation, um, in any way and, and form that you can imagine Consciousness can appear as that. It can be as a good person, as a bad person. It can be Mother Mary. It can be a murderer. It's in everything. So, and it's beyond the good and the bad. It's beyond the morality. Uh, it's beyond religion. It's beyond any kind of duality. It's the underlying layer of everything have ever existed and will ever exist. So if we get this part of it cleared, um, because the mind has a difficult time imagining um, infinity, imagining something so vast, because the vastness of consciousness 
surpasses the limitation of the mind. So for the mind, it's very difficult to imagine that. So getting, getting that part, at least giving you an idea, something that because the mind would like to visualize. Uh, human mind doesn't have, does not have the ability to perceive and imagine infinity. Infinity, infinite, it keeps going and going and going from every direction when something is infinite. And the human mind cannot imagine that. It's beyond its imagination. But this gives you an idea that what, what is consciousness. Another way we can put it is the consciousness is the very intelligence that exists in the fabric of everything. Everything that exists requires a, an intelligence within it. So this intelligence is everywhere in every single thing. From good and bad, it doesn't matter. So it's all a part of the same thing. So now the, come to the other part of this uh, subject is how do we rise consciousness? But basically what our friend is referring to is uh, not how to raise consciousness in a matter of if consciousness needs any kind of uplifting because consciousness is beyond that to be lifted or not. Um, but we're talking about how I would imagine uh, we can rise our own awareness, our own consciousness, our ability to be aware or the consciousness of the planet. I think that's what he's referring to, but let's ask. Is that right, Raphael? That's what you're referring to, that's correct? Yes. Uh, how you can raise your own consciousness, how you can be more aware, correct? Yes, it is correct. All right, so that, that's the main thing, number one, is always starts with, with ourselves, how can I be more aware? And then ultimately is how could the planet and the human race to be more aware? I mean, that's the part we're, we are, we're interested in. So the rest of it, the rest of the universe is not much of a, as of our concern because that's not something we're dealing with on a um, practical way. So basically, how do I ra raise my own awareness, my consciousness to higher levels? And in order to do that is... The conventional way of the belief system is that I will be reading books, I will be studying uh, different kind of uh, philosophy or religion or, or mysticism, go to the mystical schools and, and uh, work on myself to raise my awareness. Uh, to a higher levels. And, but most people think that they can do it by acquiring more knowledge, by studying. And uh, through this study, they can raise their consciousness. Well, a part of it is true. You begin to study, if you're reading books or you're sitting with different teachers and practicing, you have a practice. But the practice you go through or what you're studying um, that you go through, basically, ultimately it comes to this, this part, this point, is that 
I can sit down and read all kinds of spiritual books and go to see to a lot of different workshops. Uh, I get all these ideas and concepts from different uh, books and, and teachers or gurus uh, that, I, that I get, and I can start practicing some of it. And now, if I'm doing a lot of different things, it can get very, very confusing. So, and uh, can become very frustrating because some of them are, are contradict each other. And then all of a sudden, I'm spending a lot of time during the day doing various kind of um, rituals and practices. So, uh, and ultimately can create a lot of frustration. Down, down the line so or I can take a different and then I'm reading a lot of different books I'm getting the opinions and ideas of all these different people teachers gurus masters that they're offering their way of seeing it things and but it comes to a point that you have to put everything else away and basically narrow things down to one thing because if you're really reading different things from different teachers and you're as you're going forward you're narrowing things down and see like which one of these uh things that you're studying they really you feel a resonance with you have to see where it, where what is it that boosting you up what part of it is really giving you the energy that motivates you to go forward with this particular type of teachings okay and as you narrowing things down and you're going after something that is really feeding your soul it feels right and just keep in mind that things can change in the future and whatever you're studying today or whatever school of uh, spirituality you're after at one point it can change in the future to something else but basically we're talking about now and where you're at so the number one thing is that which is a very very difficult uh, and scary part for most people on the planet because most people on the planet it's very easy for them to get into a school of spirituality and mimic the words and repeat what they've learned from the teacher and pointing out finger fingers at other people that other people are unconscious or they're not doing what they should be doing or the government is unconscious or politicians are crooks and thieves and and this is wrong with the system and that is wrong with the system blah 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 that's one aspect of it is like i'm becoming more aware but i'm just pointing out finger at other people and people around me my family my friends but the challenge is that in raising your own consciousness is number one is to look at yourself which is very scary just just one moment i'm sorry one of my devices stopped uh recording so i'm just gonna have to start it again Forgive me for one moment. Okay. So it's always very easy to point out finger at other people, other things, or my partner is unconscious, or uh, my parents are unconscious, or um, the community I'm a part of is this and that. It's very easy to do that but it's always you want to start with yourself and to really come outside of yourself 
and really look at yourself from the outside and pay attention to your own um, behavior. Examine yourself. Every once in a while, pause, stop, and come out of yourself and look at yourself from the outside and examine your, the way you react. Examine your own behavior and examine your own motives and examine to see that on this spiritual path that you're in and if you're advancing or you're learning more, pay attention to see how much you are unconsciously looking for someone to admire you. How much unconsciously you're seeking some affirmation from other people saying that, oh wow, you're getting really conscious. You're really becoming amazing. And that you can attribute that to your mind. ego wants to be headed and to say, well, you're really amazing. So, or looking at yourself, for example, in, in some weak areas that we, it's very easy to see where you're at in your consciousness. For example, how much tolerance do you have for waiting? To wait. Okay. You have to wait for, you order some food, you're in a restaurant or somewhere, and now you have to wait for the food to come. And you're, you're hungry and you're agitated, maybe your blood sugar is dropped, and now you're getting angry, or you get the food you like, but something's missing, and now you're, you're ready to kill. You're upset. So, and you know, you've been reading all these great books. You have read a lot of wonderful spiritual books. Uh, you've been attending a lot of workshops. You're working on yourself. You're very proud of yourself. But now you, you're ready to cut off uh, the waitress's head or your waiter's head because he made a mistake. Or especially when it comes to food, or you're in a, you're, you are, you, you're going to breakfast, you're in a um, hotel, and it's an all-you-can-eat buffet, and, and just pay attention how all of a sudden everyone's shoving each other around or they're trying to get to the food faster than you, or they're agitated, or you're agitated. See how much patience you have to let someone ahead of you. That's one thing. Another thing you can examine yourself is when you're driving or you wanna park your car, when you're driving, are you fighting with people on the street? Whatever somebody does that it's not pleasing you? Are you calling them names or you're honking the horn or you're getting angry at them? Um, if you have to park spot, you're, you found a parking spot, you're about to park your car in, and somebody takes your, your spot. It was yours, but somebody took your spot. And pay attention to yourself that all of a sudden you can see you're in rage, you're angry, you roll your window down, you're calling them names. Sometimes people want to get out of their car and, and get in a fight. There are reports that people have been shot. Somebody shot somebody else. You want to look at your in these places to see where you're at, because these are the places showing you where you're at. Okay, another place, another eye. Let's say you have, uh, you're in a plane and the plane arrives, and if you pay attention, when the plane arrives, lands on the ground, people immediately, everybody jumps up and they stand up 
and they're very, very agitated and very antsy to get on the plane, and they're fighting over an inch with each other. And see, look, you look at yourself in that situation. Can you stay, maintain your calmness and stay on your seat and still be meditative and let other people go first? Or you have to just jump up and fight your way through them. You know, these are the places that you can look at yourself and see, is meditation working? Have you brought meditation in your state of being in situations like this? I'll give you another example. Let's say you have an opinion about something You have an idea about whatever. This is your idea of your guru, your teacher, your school of spirituality, or you're studying something, and you're sharing it with someone, and somebody insults your prejudice. Somebody tells you, oh, this is all bullshit, and this teacher you're with, he or she is just, scam and it's not real and blah 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 so now they are insulting your way of thinking and it's a very good time to pay attention see if rage is coming out of you and you're ready to kill because someone simply do not agree with the way you're thinking and and they're putting your way of thinking down and look you look at yourself to see how you react are you still in meditation are you still the buddha are you still operating from a higher level of consciousness and not affected by their way of thinking of your opinion because who cares what they think? That's your way of being. But well, why would you get so upset that they don't agree with you? Who cares? I don't care. I don't care if people agree with me or not. I live my own life. What about if someone criticizes you? You've done something, whether right or wrong. Do you get criticized? Has it ever happened? and you're being criticized can you handle it can you stay still in your meditation and listen to someone criticizing you they may be right you may be having unconscious behavior and you're doing something wrong and they're sharing it with you but instead you pay attention to yourself when someone's criticizing you most human beings are not willing to stay quiet and listen. They're, they're about to react and defend themselves right away. Immediately you want to react. Even, and let's say you're even right. This person is criticizing you, but the person who's criticizing you is wrong. And you're right. Well, can you keep your, can you stay centered and be meditative and let them say whatever, whether they're wrong and not be at the point of wanting to jump the gun and shoot them or strangle them. So, raising your own consciousness to a higher level, it really starts with yourself first. You have to work on yourself. And you have to work on the areas that you really don't want to look at. Especially if in something... Also, what's coming from the other world? I mean, from the world outside of you. 
let's say somebody continuously, you're continuously making mistakes. You're in some sort of work with anyone and you're continuously forgive, forgetting things. You're not paying attention to details. You're, and, and you're being, and you're, the person you're working with, your employer, your employee, your parents, your teacher is criticizing you, is telling you that you're making mistakes. You're making mistakes. And, and instead of paying attention, you're reacting. You're getting angry, you're reacting, you're trying to defend yourself, you're trying to create, point out, point out that no, you're right instead of really taking a look at it and see, oh, maybe I am paying, making mistakes. Maybe I am being careless and not paying attention to my commitments or whatever. I'm not really paying attention. I'm just being spaced out. It hurts when someone tells you that, and it hurts to look at yourself and your own shortcoming. It's painful. So most of us were conditioned from childhood to deny it, go into a denial, rejecting it, not paying attention, and becoming react reactive, reacting towards it and wanting to point finger at the person who's criticizing you that there is something wrong with them because i don't want to look at myself because that's the toughest thing to do in life it's always easy to blame things on other people other situ circumstances other situations but it's the toughest Thing to do is to look at yourself and admit your shortcoming admitting the lack of attention you're not paying attention or let the person that is continuously late whatever whatever appointments you have whatever agreements you have whatever it is you're always late and you know you brush this off oh that's the kind of a person i am but you made plans for with someone and you were supposed to be there and they're waiting for you and you're late so raising your consciousness to a higher frequency and becoming aware it's not only in one area you just it's not just reading a spiritual book it's not just working on activating your third eye it's not only going to a workshop it is but then you want to take what you've learned and examine your daily life paying attention bringing your awareness to every aspect of your daily life by, number one, looking at yourself. Am I needy? You know, when I come across someone that I'm attracted to, am I needy? Am I coming from this needy energy? Okay. that I really want their attention all the time. Pay attention to me, pay attention to me. Am I operating from a needy place? That's another thing. Am I being delusional? Am I making up stuff in my mind and imagining things are in that way or they're really in that way? We have that in a spiritual community a lot. A lot of people imagining they're getting downloads or they're being contacted from by beings from other spaces or dimensions but it's an ego that is tripping out it's an ego that's making up stories 
wanting to say I'm very spiritual and look at me and look at me. I'm so advanced, but I'm getting a lot of messages. But when it comes to waiting for food and somebody is takes by mistake or purposely or whatever jumps in front of them and takes their spot, they're ready to kill that person. Well, you say you're very advanced in your consciousness and you have reached the Buddha, so then you should be able to even skip your meal and let other people eat your food and just go home hungry or sleep hungry one night. You, you've developed a heart, you know? You've become like Mother Mary. you become the Buddha. It means you have developed a lot of compassion so you're willing to let go of yourself and your own needs for other people. You're saying you, you're very high up, you're very advanced. Then how come over just giving up a sandwich or not, you're, you're ready to kill your fellow human being? You understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? Very simple things on our, our own human needs and our relationships with other people will reflect back to you where you're at. Where you're at with yourself. Very easy if you're willing to look at yourself. Now, I'm not talking about you're looking at yourself and now you start blaming yourself all the time. And that's the, now the opposite part of it. That the people who just go into this op opposite from a denial place that they're denying anything is wrong, going and go into this other direction and their self, they're going to the self-blame, continuous self-blame that they're not worthy and they're not good enough and they're stupid and they're disadvantaged or blah, blah, blah. And they go deeply into that part. So that's another issue. That's another thing that you don't want to fall into because they... Raising your consciousness to a higher level is not going into this self-blame. It's going into this acknowledgement, acknowledging your shortcomings and, and being aware of it instead of being in denial. Now, whether you can correct it or not, that's a different story. You may not even be able to correct it. But at least you have awareness. You're aware of it. You're neither denying it nor blaming yourself. You're simply aware of a shortcoming. That means you also have change your consciousness and you've arisen to a higher frequency because the self-awareness mechanism has kicked in and you're looking at yourself look if i'm continuously late i'm going to go have lunch with my mother i'm late i'm going to take my car to the mechanic to fix it i'm late i'm going to meet up with Shishi at my office over work, I'm late. I'm, I'm having a date, I'm late. I'm going to yoga class, I'm late. I'm continuously late and everybody is continuously complaining to me that you're late. Then, if I'm not looking at it, then I'm in denial. I'm denying. But if I start to look at it and admit it to myself that I'm always late. So is it a lack of commitment 
or uh, it's a matter of control. Am I trying to control the situation by being late? What is it that everybody continuously tells me I'm late? So there must be a truth into it because there's a number of people telling me that. So it's worth for me to look, look into it and examine it. And by looking into it and examine it to see if there's any validity to it, there at that point, I am rising my consciousness. It's just giving you a simple example. Raising your consciousness doesn't mean that you went and did a medicine ayahuasca journey in Peru and while wow, you became one with everything in existence and you have an amazing oneness, but then next day you're acting like an asshole when you're in a restaurant and your food is a little bit late and you're just being an asshole to the waiter or waitress or everyone else around you, then you are nowhere. You haven't done anything. Raising your consciousness to a higher level means that that awareness is going to be in every aspect of your life not just one place, not just when taking medicine and feeling one with universe, is that when you're in traffic and you're stuck, and you're in a two hour traffic, you can still practice your meditation and you can still be calm and centered. Then you are working on yourself and you're raising your vibrations to a higher frequency, you're, you're raising your consciousness. It's the little things in life that matter and they show you where you're at with yourself. As well as being able to self-observe, as we talked about it before, of being aware of your thoughts, being, not get involved with your thinking pattern, not fall asleep into that, simply being aware that you're not the stream of your thoughts. The thoughts that are passing through your mind, the story that you're carrying, whatever is your story, Poor me, I'm this, I'm that, this happened to me, that happened to me. The story, the poor me story. That majority of people on this planet are addicted to this story. There's a deep addiction to the story of poor me. Can you consciously become aware of it? and avoid it. Simply not identify with the story. Be aware of it, but not being identified with it. Yes, something happened to you in the past. You got abused, you got raped, you got touched inappropriately, you, you, you were wrong. Okay, I get it. But can you now let the story go and not keep carrying it into the present moment? Not keep bringing it here. Can you do that? Not carrying the story, like this garbage bag you have on your back, and you're carrying the garbage bag with you. Can you just drop it and come here in this moment with me and just be storyless because this moment has no stories. It's storyless. Then you raise your consciousness to a higher level. Can you simply be aware of your emotions passing through you and be aware of them? 
anxiety or anger comes, be angry, feel anxiety, but stay in this place that you're not your anxiety, you're not your anger. You're simply observing it. You're simply experiencing a movement right now, but that doesn't define who you are. And then it goes away. That's how you raise your consciousness to a higher level, by self-observation. But it starts with yourself. And the people and the situations surrounding you keep reflecting back to you where you're at. If you're a kind of person who gets cheated all the time, you're in this situation that things happen to you and you encounter situations that you get cheated, then you need to look at yourself. You need to examine within yourself, what is it inside me that is not trustworthy? What is it inside me? that cheats because existence is a reflection of who you are your reality of life is a reflection of where your consciousness is if you don't like your life it's not that the life outside something's wrong with it there is something's wrong in you that you're not looking at it because if you examine it and look at it and rise above that shortcoming inside yourself surely the other world the life outside of you is going to change it must change it has no choice because the life outside of you, the other life, is always a reflection of where you're at. It always gives you what you need. It always confronts you with whatever teachings you need to learn, whatever that is. You may be riding a motorcycle, and get in a car accident and break your leg and be forced to stay in bed for six months with your leg up you know and screws in your leg then you need to learn something from that existence there's no mistakes or accidents in life everything is perfectly designed for your growth your spirituality so you have an accident, something happened, something unpleasant has happened in your life. There is teachings in it for you. There is something you need to learn from it. Patience or forgiveness, something. Always can learn something from a situation. Or you can go in a victim place and perceive yourself as a victim and life is doing you wrong. And you've done that for thousands of years and that doesn't get you anywhere. You're back at the same place and then you're gonna have to reincarnate and come back one more time till you rise above it. You've been around the loop. But if you want out of the loop, then you really need to look at yourself more than anything else it starts with you and it ends with you
And one of the best ways to do that is always to learn to quiet your mind. Be quiet. Silence. We've talked this many, many, many times. Practice being quiet. Practice being still. And the more you're still, and the more you're quiet, the more the life around you comes into harmony with where you're at, harmonizes with you. The other world, the world in the outside, will come in harmony with your internal process. That doesn't mean you're going to have $10 million in your bank account tomorrow. And that doesn't mean you can manipulate people to do what you want them to do. That doesn't mean that. It means you come to harmony with what, it, what life offers, whatever there is. Whether it goes your way or it doesn't go your way, you become harmonious with it. That's how you raise your vibrations. That's how you raise your consciousness. I have a question here. What of those as lying around you and you sit back as it is your own home? So. How are we doing? You doing all right? Yeah. Hello, Mark. Hi, Mark. Is this your first time with us? Yes, my yeah. first time. Yeah, Where, what country are you from? Germany, from Frankfurt. Okay. We met you by Frankfurt Ring. Yeah, yeah, nice to see you. I was wondering if it's you or not. Really good to see you, brother. Me too. And uh, Britta said, you're, you're going to be with us when I come back. Yes, me yes. and Natja, yes. I look forward to it. We also. <laughs> so you, you finally made it to the, to the academy. What? You, you made it. It's your first academy. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's, it's very nice to see you. <laughs> and and I, I look forward to our time in Frankfurt. Oh, me too. Yeah. It'll be a great time, I know. Yeah, I look forward to it. Is that uh, Kirsten? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Kirsten. Hi. Is, we, have we met before? You yes, know? we have met in Aarhus, in Denmark. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you. Is this, uh, is, this, is this your first time? Oh no, I have been on and listened to your talk or your speech. Right. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Oh. Well, I ha I had some uh, health problems at that moment. Okay. Yeah, I still have. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, welcome. Welcome, and welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Pia. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm yeah, in the good. middle of uh, packing all. Right, I'm I can see. Moving out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new uh, time in life coming. Right, it's right. Beautiful. beautiful, yeah. Well, change is good, so. No, change is good because, uh, oh, you know, I give this, not give it, but I let my daughter buy it and I, I'm still at the loan, but uh, so because I feel that, I would be happy to see them here in the house. 
And right. uh, then I found my dream house, you know, on the mountain uh, with a view over the sea. And right. <laughs> so I so, go into one. So you give, you give up one and you get another one. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Yeah. And that if you yeah. let things go, something better comes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, welcome back. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rosemary. Let me see. I I don't think. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. I don't think you hear me. So maybe I'm muted. I'm not sure. Trine. Hello, Trine. Hello. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Yeah, so everything's good. Did you went through your transplant? Yes, everything is good. Uh, I'm looking forward to coming to Hamar. Well, okay, you're coming to Hamar. Yes. Great, wonderful. Well, I look forward to seeing you. Yes. <laughs> okay, anybody has anything to share? Uh, we only have... Yes. Five minutes left. Yeah, but aura. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, why don't you talk about aura a little bit? Because uh, there's soon time for aura for those who want right. to be lost yeah. there this year too, and it's uh, really looking forward to go into that again. It was beautiful last year, and I know that we it's going to be better and better. <laughs> It feels like that. It's really yeah, uh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up. Oh, time, um, beautiful time to be together and really oh, go into right. yourself and uh, oh, right. explore yourself deeper. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, for the, uh, those of you who um, haven't been in Ore, uh, or it's Ore, Sweden, which is um, a town in the in the mountains in the uh, middle of Sweden. It's a ski resort, and um, uh, I will be having uh, my fourth annual retreat in Ore, Sweden, and uh, this is basically the signature retreat that I offer, uh, and it's been getting every year better and better. And um, the capacity for uh, this retreat is 30 people. So it's very intimate. And what we do is I'm teaching all five levels of the 5D quantum healing training program at, at this retreat, which is 10 nights and 11 days will be together. Now, the significance about this retreat is that is what we're learning is just not healing techniques. Uh, we learn uh, a lot more than that. And there is a lot of teachings and work about the awareness, which is the 5D quantum awareness of how to stay still and operate from a place of silence the silent within and stillness and how to operate from this place whether we're doing healing training whether we're doing healing work or we're just living our lives on daily basis and once we understand this and we incorporate silence and stillness within ourselves automatically things starts to change in our lives. There's a quality in life that come, takes over the, a higher quality of being in our lives. Because this way of being, it brings you completely in this moment and helps you to dissolve into the moment of life. And by this, transformation into being in this moment what happens is the story of your life disappears and 
and it brings you into the presence and being in the presence of this moment is where the juice is where the life force exists in this moment the more you dive into here and now the more you begin to experience the energy of life and this energy this presence has the ability of transform you physically you can start feeling much younger and more vital with more energy it has the ability to heal your body it certainly gets rid of your emotional issues that you have been carrying for a number of years um, opens you up psychically and spiritually to higher realms of consciousness because you settle into the moment you come to here and now in this moment and you're operating from here and you're not going back and forth into the past or the future and of course this is a training because for a number of years we've been conditioned to have a strong attachment to the past we're very very attached to our past and therefore this past leaks into the future and we use it to project into the future of fears and anxieties your future fears really coming from your past and the anxiety that we experience is an anticipation of something that may happen in the future which really comes from the past so once we learn how to dive into here and now the benefits of it are infinite i mean it's the way to awakening the self-realization only happens in here and now and the presence of here and now has the power of healing your body of rejuvenating you make you become younger you become more vital everything in your life all of a sudden becomes very harmonious and and the the deep power of the trust that it's being enhanced within you of trusting that life will take care of itself because you're really feeling it in this very moment everything is taken care of that's tremendous quality that comes into your life of trusting that everything that you need will be provided because you're here right now and here takes care of your of you not the worries of the mind we also dance a lot that's really fun because i realized that when i incorporate fun and dancing and laughter into uh my training programs that makes everything so different because naturally when you're dancing and having fun and laughing then your willingness to learn increases drastically so that's why i incorporate a lot of fun into my programs because how do you teach a highly sophisticated healing training program in that would take lifetime to really understand it in 11 days and convey all these different aspects of it in such a short period of time and and have everybody understands it uh, from whatever age or background that you come it doesn't matter you you can have a spiritual background or not it won't make any difference everybody gets into it and everybody starts to understand because we deal with fundamentals and once the fundamentals are taken care of everything become falls into places so um it is my signature workout we still we uh, already uh, have a number of people signed up 
So if you're interested, I would say jump into it as soon as possible because uh, we're getting booked very quickly and we only have limited space available. So feel free to contact Pia uh, if you're in Scandinavia or Anneli um, or contact us. Uh, we'll be more than happy. You can contact my office and or write to me or write to Shishi and we'll get you all the information you need. Uh, for those of you very quickly who are in California, I'm offering a series of talks. It's called 5D Quantum Awareness Talk Series that I'm offering uh, in Los Angeles. Our, our next event is going to be tomorrow uh, evening from 7.30 to 9.30 at a place called the Gateway, the Portal Gateway. It's on Venice Boulevard. All the information is on my website, which is zaratustra.tv. And on Thursday, I will be offering the same event in uh, Long Beach, as well as I'm offering another 5D Quantum Awareness talk in, uh, in LA Expo, downtown LA, which is going to be on this coming Sunday, and my event is going to be from five to six uh, in the evening. Um, so all the information is on my website. Uh, please refer to zaratustra.tv or contact us on one of my Facebook pages uh, or contact me via my email, info at fifthdhealing.com. Uh, um, Look forward to connecting with you, sending you lots of love and light. Our next academy is going to be next Tuesday at the same time. I, I think uh, for those of you who are in California, uh, I have to check the time. Um, we pushed it to 11 a.m. Uh, for today, but I think the time is going to change in Scandinavia as, as next week. Is that right, Hilde? Are we? As you it's going to change uh, the, the last week in, in March. The last yeah. week. So next in, week it'll be at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Right. So our academy for those are those are in uh, the U.S. in California. The academy is going to be at 10 a.m. next week. So you're aware of it. The reason we pushed it up to 11 a.m. was because we wanted to match up with our friends in Scandinavia. Okay. Sending you lots of love and light. If you have any questions, you can write it to us or come to our academy page, uh, Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness.